Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. Today, taking a look at this pistol that I teased a little bit in a YouTube short. This is Big Chungus. It's kind of a weird design. Block-based, which is, as you guys know, not my normal forte. Uh, but lately, I've kind of been in love with the Glock 17L, which is a long slide and long barrel design and decided to make an even more ridiculous frame than my last one, the Glock 17 LB, the long boy. This is relatively similar to that concept where you have a smooth dust cover with no rail that comes up flush to the barrel and slide. Now, where this one differs from the last one, the last one you may recall, if you haven't seen the Glock 17 long boy, has a 19 length grip and is designed around the PY-2A, the Print Your 2A architecture and rail design. This is designed uh, as a remix of Ivan's DD 17.2 um, frame design, and in this particular build, utilizes Riptide rails, which I really, really like. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. So why is this the way that it is? You know, the answer could easily be pills, baby, but it's not. The reason why this is the way that it is is for a very specific purpose. This was designed as sort of a prototype frame for a competitive shooting pistol. I'm debating going to the Maker's Match, um, which is a home-built gun shooting competition, and kind of wanted to put together what I felt would be one of the most excellent ideas for a competitive shooting pistol. Now, why this has this big chunky thing up front, you'll notice there are two uh, hex screws in place up there. That's because there are two channels underneath the barrel, which in this case are filled with tungsten weights about seven ounces, actually exactly seven ounces of tungsten weight, and then secured up front with these two uh, M10 sized set screws that just kind of screw in the front and just secure everything in place. Even though realistically, these tungsten weights aren't going anywhere because you have to tap them in with a punch and hammer to really get them in there. Why are there tungsten weights underneath the barrel? Well, that's because you want to have weight towards the front of the frame in order to reduce muzzle flip when shooting. That's one of the reasons why uh, I really like this slide setup because it has a windowed cut, which helps reduce the weight, the reciprocating weight when shooting. Lower reciprocating weight, lower recoil, lo uh, reduced muzzle flip, which means that when you are shooting, you're not going to be needing to spend time getting back on target. It's gonna flip and then you'll be right back where you put it. Why does it have this ridiculously large beaver tail in the back? Because, why not? First off, I needed to have a place to put the Booligan Custom Gunworks logo. I could have put it anywhere else, but why not a giant beaver tail? Second, I've got pretty big hands. So my hands kind of swallow, even a Glock 17 sized grip. And it is pretty likely with my high grip style, which is not a great grip, but it's how I shoot, um, with, without a beaver tail there, it might be likely that I might slice my hand a little bit, get some slide bite. So this started as just kind of a normal length beaver tail and then went to just a ridiculous length beaver tail because I can. As the designer, that is my prerogative to put ridiculous things on and I really, really like it. It's actually quite comfortable because you can kind of nestle your hand in there when shooting and you can shoot with absolutely no risk of slide bite. It's just not gonna happen. So not something you need to worry about on this frame. This guy has a, uh, as I mentioned before, a 17 length grip instead of the 19 length grip on the long boy. The idea behind the long boy was sort of to make a, I mean, these are all dumb, goofy, gun ideas, that's the whole point, is just to make something a little wonky that no one's ever done before, but might actually have a little bit of a practical purpose. So 
This has a 17 length grip because it's more competition minded. Let's get to this optic up top. I can already see the comments. Why didn't you just have the slide milled for an RMR like basically everybody else does? Well, this is actually old school tech. If you look at uh, practical shooting guns, so guns that would be running in like the USPSA and other race guns, you would often see a red dot scope or red dot sight, excuse me, mounted on its side so that you can get the window as close as possible to the bore without um, you know, needing to mount it to the slide because frankly the technology wasn't there yet. Uh, but this is something that you would see pretty common in practical shooting uh, pistols from like the late 1990s or the early 2000s. Uh, sometimes even earlier than that, you would see interesting stuff with like Seymour style red dots. The other reason I went with this is because I had a Sig Romeo pistol. Um, I had one, or excuse me, a Sig Romeo red dot sight. I had one, uh, I still obviously have one mounted on here, but I kind of had it moved around from gun to gun, and I figured why not figure out a way to mount it on this. It's actually probably one of my favorite red dot sights that I've used recently. I really like the shake away feature. You never have to turn it on, you just grab the thing. And it's got a little motion sensor inside so that it flips the dot on and it's ready to go. It has battery life that's measured in years. Uh, it just will run pretty much forever. It's lightweight, it's kind of low profile, has a nice angular design to it, which I really like. And hey, when mounted on its side, it's got these nice side mount and adjusted button, adjustment buttons. Um, how I mounted it is I designed this little piece here on the side uh, that mounts obviously with the normal four screws to the optic itself. And then these two screws, which are very proud, you can kind of look at it on the side. And this is the very first, well, this is technically version two. Version one didn't have the cutouts and mounted in a different way. Uh, version two of this sight mount, um, I still need to kind of figure out a couple of things on it, but it is mounted. The rear screw goes into that top pin on the locking block. You can see the pin there. And back here, there's a screw it's because there's a special short and length pin. And then I, dr I drilled and tapped the hole um, so that this screws right into it. Up front, I was initially going to mount it to that front pin, but I didn't like that setup too much um, for the, the front rail. So instead, I drilled a hole through the frame and actually into the aluminum of the front rail itself. Again, that's a riptide rail. So I drilled a hole into the rail in a not particularly load-bearing portion and then tapped it for a matching screw. But these screws sit a little proud, so I'm going to replace these with either some button head screws that don't stick out at kind of a funky angle, or I will tweak the mount as well. Will this work? I have no idea. Uh, it seems to be holding quite well. We'll see what happens when I'm actually able to get it out to the range and just start abusing the life out of this thing. Um, it has a little bit of flex to it, but it snaps kind of right back to where it's supposed to be. So whether that flex becomes a problem or not, I don't know. But again, the big thing that we're looking at is the pistol itself. The sight mount is just kind of going to be the icing on the cake if and when I'm able to get it working exactly how I'd like. Uh, again, the part of this that is a firearm is the frame. It says Big Chungus. Why it says Big Chungus kind of started as a joke. Uh, my initial run of this didn't have any markings on it at all. And those are files that I actually sent over to print, shoot, repeat. If you want to see this gun in action, obviously without the sight, and when he put up the quick teaser video, he didn't have the weights up in the front. So if you want to see this frame in action and kind of see how it works, uh, take a look over at Prince Shoot Repeat's video because he he's really happy with his so far from what I've seen. Seems to shoot quite well. But we kind of kind of ran as a joke, uh, you know, that the things you know big chunkus, big chunky boy because it's got these extra weights up front and through the debossed logo on there kind of as a joke 
but then really it kind of took off. People actually liked it, uh, so we stuck with it. Um, there's also, I don't know if you will be able to see it in this video, but there is a big chungus, big fat bugs bunny located in the Magwell, little secret guy there. Why, why not? Um, where are the files for this? If you're on my Patreon, you would know because this has already been released on my Patreon page. They already have these files, both with the debossed Big Chungus logo, as well as a slick version that doesn't have any logos on it because not everybody wants to have ridiculous memes on their gun. That might just be me. So these will be released publicly either tail end of April in the next you know two weeks or so, or early in May. Uh, well, I kind of dial in the design a little bit more tweak a couple of shortcomings that I've noticed and that I've heard from people who have printed this um, and who are running it. And just, you know, because I like to give my Patreon followers a little bit of a bonus by giving them access to some of my design files early. So yeah, we'll get out to the range. Um, I've been getting out to the range a little bit more often. As you've noticed, I have been able to post some range videos and those have been received not very well at all. Everybody complains that I never post videos from the range, and then no one ever watches the videos that I post from the range. So here we are. But I will most likely post some range videos from this once I'm able to get this kind of dialed in, get it broken in. That was the issue I had with the Glock 17 Longboy. I don't think I've actually released that video yet, and I still might not. Uh, the issues I had at the range with that were mainly environmental. It was snowing, it was, it was windy and raining, and God, the video quality was just terrible, 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 terrible that day. Um, the whole first half of the video is basically unwatchable, and the second half of the video is me having break-in issues with this new slide and barrel setup. So, yeah, we'll have a video of that up eventually, but for now, enjoy this little tour and walk around of a 3D printed Glock frame, Big Chungus. If you'd like access to these files, just wait a little bit. Like I said, the Patreon page has had it for a couple of weeks. Now everybody else will have it in a couple more weeks. So if you want it now, you can jump on my Patreon, but realistically, you're probably better off just waiting a couple of weeks when they'll be re released on my Odyssey page and on BooliganCustomGunWorks.com. As always, thanks for watching.